real estate of bears. And I suppose it's also worth looking at some of the bear arguments. So let me pull up a bear argument I was just reading about the other day. Uh, and I thought some of it was a little disingenuous, but then again, disingenuous bear arguments have kind of been what we found uh, rapidly throughout 2023 here. So uh, it's actually another one of these uh, reventure consulting pieces. Uh, and there's talk about this uh, mortgage crisis brewing. Uh, and so this headline piece here, uh, which got quite a few likes on Twitter, did very well here. You know, 7,488 likes here is very good. But anyway, this here indicates the debt to income ratio for all home buyers. And what you find is that the DTI levels, debt to income levels, for new mortgages is sitting at about 40% which is actually higher than the 39.1% where we were in the 2006-2007 bubble. Now, uh, in my opinion, some of this is, uh, you know, obviously at first glance, it's concerning. But it's worth noting what this chart is actually showing you. This chart is not showing you the debt-to-income level of all owners of real estate. It's actually showing you the debt-to-income level of new borrowers of real estate. And why is that so important? It's so important because the nominal number of sales that are occurring in real estate right now are actually at substantial lows. Pull those up to show you those. But if you jump on over to the Redfin Data Center, you can see this in detail and we'll go through that. But think about that for a moment. In 2006, you were actually at the highs of number of properties sold. In fact, we'll see if the St. Louis Fed has one as well. Number of properties sold uh, in the United States. We'll see if we can get a few charts to compare here. But this is important to consider. How many nominal number of homes are actually selling? Why does that matter? It matters because if you have, uh, let's just say, 4 million home sales in a year selling where individuals have a 40% debt-to-income level, but then you only have 2 million sales in another year where people have a 40% debt-to-income level. Well, then this scenario, while it might actually look similar to 2006, is potentially half as bad as previously because your existing owner stock, your existing debtors, so to speak, is actually substantially lower uh, than, than what you had then. Uh, so uh, St. Louis Fred indicator here, this is the, uh, their chart unfortunately only goes back to July of 2022, which isn't great, but clearly shows you a decline in existing sales here. We'll work on getting a little bit more data on this. But, uh, oh, here we go, home sold. This should give us, the Redfin data center should go back a little bit further, hopefully. No, also only goes back to about 2020. Uh, it's unfortunate. I'd like to get a little bit of a larger chart here. Uh, but uh, as we can see on the Redfin Data Center as well, we're at a substantially lower level of sales and certainly where we were in 2021 or 2022 by quite a bit. If we compare 2020, uh, what do we have here? 2023 to 2021, uh, you're down more than 40% in sales. Uh, whereas year over year, we're down about 16%. So that's something to keep in mind as well, is that the existing level of, uh, of owners will certainly probably have a substantially lower 30-year fixed rate mortgage where their debt to income is actually way lower than what this chart is revealing. But as usual, a single chart can't tell you so terribly much about what's actually happening in the economy. So I didn't really love this chart. There's some other insights here as well such as this here, home buyer down payment over the last 25 years. And this idea that the number that the down payment people are placing uh, is declining. This really feeds into uh, people's mostly incorrect notion that the less money you put down, the less capable of a borrower you are. Pause for a moment and think about that. Most people have this impression that, oh, if you don't put 20% down, you're over leveraging your real estate. But that's not necessarily true, especially if you're able to get yourself a good deal. For example, many of the course members who are in my real estate uh, program on building your wealth, going from zero to millionaire and real estate investing, uh, find great deals, putting three, three and a half percent or five percent down to where after they buy the property and they spend maybe say fifteen, twenty thousand dollars on renovations, it's actually almost as if they've put closer to twenty or sometimes even thirty percent down because they bought the property below market value. So really, lower down payments, I, I don't think are necessarily a, a sign of, of somebody buying uh, you know, without the ability to qualify. In fact, if anything, and this is something to consider for that first chart as well, 
the ability to qualify at all today is substantially harder than what it used to be back in uh, you know the uh, uh, 2006 and seven period. Essentially, anybody was able to get a loan in 2006 and seven. Whereas today, you actually have to prove that you have the ability to repay a loan. Now, that might not sound like a big deal to you, but it's actually a technical phrase in the real estate world that a lender is signing off saying, I believe this consumer has the ability to actually repay this loan. And that's because back in 2006, nobody cared if the person defaulted. And you might think that, well, that's wrong. I mean, that could never happen. No, it actually still happens today. Just look at the subprime auto market. So if you consider the subprime auto market, you're finding that the underwriting fees and loan fees that car buyers are paying mean that the lenders still make profit even if 70 plus percent of the car buyers default because they're taking so many fees up front and even after they sell the car for its residual value after some form of liquidation of the asset, you know, repossession, liquidation, the lenders still make money. That's predatory lending. These subprime auto loans are not actually signing people up for a loan that the lenders or dealerships actually believe that the customer has an ability to repay for. That's very different from what you have in real estate now. So home buyer down payments going down over the last 25 years, you know, from an average of say 21% to 18%, frankly matters zero. In fact, there was another person on social media, they made a YouTube video uh, and they're talking about this impending real estate crash. And they did this classic a fallacious argumentation where, where they go, look at this, Bank of America now offering 0% down loans. You know what that means. And then they kind of leave it to the audience to conclude that somebody putting 0% down is actually bad. But that's not actually true because if somebody has, let's say a 720 credit score and they're getting a good deal on a property and they're getting a 30 year fixed rate mortgage, and they have the ability to repay at that level because maybe they have a higher salary but they have less savings or are choosing to use less of their savings because they can borrow for a 30 year fixed rate term. Uh, and maybe they're walking into some kind of uh, uh, race diversity based uh, uh, you know, credits or subsidies. A lot of these lower down payment programs like the 0% or 1% loans are dedicated to either you know, black Americans or uh, Hispanic Americans or, or you know, whatever other demographics. Point of that is to say that you can't simply blanket and say, oh, people are putting less down, they must be poor. Highly wrong. <laughs> In fact, I personally have put down 3% on properties before <laughs> that <laughs> ended up becoming investment properties. There are ways you can do that. We talk about it a lot on the channel. Just subscribe for more. Uh, and uh, and, and uh, they're phenomenal deals uh, that you can make fantastic money in. So again, putting down a lower down payment is potentially a strategic way to leverage uh, and not necessarily a sign that somebody is a low quality borrower. Uh, so uh, this, uh, this particular individual who continues to look at um, uh, mortgage defaults versus the unemployment rate is sort of the next chart that they give here. Uh, and they make this argument here that while well, mortgage defaults and, uh, and a lot of foreclosures are coming, you know, I find it hard to argue that you could say a lot of foreclosures are coming when, frankly, real estate prices have been trending up since January. I, I, I don't quite see that. In fact, when I go to a market, now I'm fine. In fact, I was in another foreclosure auction yesterday in Oregon. I walked through this foreclosure auction uh, and uh, the agent and I were looking at each other and we're like, I realized it's like 0.5% of the market right now are foreclosures. And the leading pipeline of foreclosures is still way below trend of the pre-COVID era. I think a lot of folks forget that. They see sort of this, this foreclosure moratorium where foreclosures went to zero and then all of a sudden you're seeing foreclosures return and they're like, oh my gosh, foreclosures are up 200% from last year. It's like, well, duh, they were nearly zero. <laughs> you know? So it's just, uh, it's, it's again, disingenuous data. Uh, and my goal is always to look at how, how can we put data and facts together to understand what's really likely to happen. 
Uh, you know, then there's this argument, like it's literally stated here. But for now, mortgage defaults are low because the unemployment rate is low and because people are finding ways to take out other forms of debt like credit cards and personal spending, but that's unlikely to last. You know, I hear that argument all the time. Uh, and what you could do is you could look at household debt uh, as a percentage of personal disposable income. That's actually a really important ratio because you're saying how much debt do you have compared to how much money you're bringing in. Just type it in. Uh, and uh, household debt service payments as a percentage of disposable personal income. Right here on chart. And I have to like, uh, my little screen is covering up how low we, where, where we are right now is relative to where we've been in history. When we go back to the 80s, People are spending 12% of their disposable income on debt. You go back to 2006, you're, you hit a peak of 13%, actually 2007, 13%. Right now we're sitting at 9.6% and it's actually started to inflect down in Q1 of 2023, which means we're actually below trend of the 2013 to 2020 decline in household debt service payments as a percentage of disposable income. So yes, maybe nominally the amount of debt and credit outstanding is increasing, but as a percentage of people's income, it's actually decreasing. So once again, it's very easy to skew people's opinions and impressions of what's actually happening when you're cherry picking data that looks bearish and then suggesting, oh, well, people are putting less money down. Oh, people have higher debt to income levels on new mortgages. Oh, imagine that when rates are 7%. Oh, people are borrowing more. Yeah, but then when you add in the context, you're like, well, less people are borrowing, which means more people are likely fixed. People are actually spending less out of the income they have on debt. <laughs> and you look at the nonsense of the foreclosure, uh, uh, this foreclosure crisis where really, most of this data is is easily uh, put into context, and it's a context that doesn't call for a massive real estate crash. Now, don't get me wrong. Did we have our 15% correction up to 20% in some markets? Absolutely. Do I think real estate is off to the races and it's time to, you know, YOLO and over leverage on real estate? No. I think it's time to be patient and prudent, acquire good deals, ideally in the winter time frame. You know, your sort of October to February time frame is usually a great time to buy good deals because the people who are selling generally need to sell and there's an opportunity to negotiate. You generally tend to see wider gaps in the list to sales price ratio. That's just sort of a fancy real estate agent way of saying stuff sells for less. And really when we put all the data together, it's like, well, you know, it's kind of hard to say that there's some sort of massive default wave coming, but... Uh, it's certainly not going to stop uh, the the bearish video making. And again, I you know I, I I get it. Like sometimes people are like, oh, but Kevin, some of your titles are bearish. T there's there's a difference between a title being bearish and the actual context of the video saying, look, here's a bearish title. Here's why people are talking about this bearish information. Uh, and then here's how that is either true or not true. And so we can we can evaluate what's actually going on. So I think what's most important is the context of the story. And sadly these days, uh, a lot of social media is, is just convinced that there's this, this massive uh, correction coming. And I think the, the true evidence of it, and I would be more than happy to say, yeah, there's a big problem coming if I saw some really good evidence of it. The true evidence of it is very, very weak every time we, we dive into it, uh, which is a perfect way to remind you about what Mike Wilson did. The great flip-flop appears to have occurred. <laughs> okay, before we get into that, reminder, check out the programs on Building Your Wealth linked down below. We have a big uh, coupon expiration for all of the various different programs on Building Your Wealth, whether it's the Stocks and Psychology of Money, the Zero to Millionaire Real Estate Investing course, really popular, Do-It-Yourself Property Management or Rental Renovations course. That one's also very popular. That one's uh, actually a collaboration between myself and uh, property managers with a combined 70 years of experience in property management. It's, it's really, really incredible. So uh, some phenomenal phenomenal insights in all of these various different programs. If you have any questions for bundles, you can email us at staff at meetkevin.com. And uh, we're almost completely booked out with our uh, shadowing experience, which is less expensive for existing course members. If you're, uh, if, so if you're an existing course member, make sure to check out uh, the uh, link down below uh, or email us at staff at meetkevin.com if you had some inquiries on that. Yeah, I see you're very bullish on the market. I was just... Uh... 
I was just wondering, in, the, in this environment, so I'm based in, uh, in London, in the UK, and I'm thinking of uh, buying a flat. Uh, obviously, I'd have to get a mortgage with near 6% interest rates. So I was just wondering if it's worth still um, just plowing uh, you know, money into stocks rather than into a down payment and then sort of uh, betting on housing going up. What do you think? Yeah. Okay. Great question. So, in in this environment, I'm I'm not betting on a very quick and near near massive runaway rally in pricing for real estate. But I actually think it's a, a fantastic opportunity over the next couple of years to get into real estate and uh, look for really good deals because I'm I'm of this mindset that uh, we, we're sort of in a pause for real estate where you've seen pricing. Uh, that has come down uh, since May of last year and sort of increased uh, since about uh, January. That's at least been the pattern here. I would look at that specifically in your area, but that's been the pattern in most areas that I've analyzed. Uh, some areas are already higher than where they were last year. But uh, let's say we're somewhat on this trajectory. Uh, if we started out with uh, a this this incredible bull run of real estate in 2021, expect that to be a lot more flat and modest over the next few years. Uh, as interest rates come down, we'll probably see more sellers to offset some of the benefits of interest rates coming down. And that dynamic will probably take a few more years to play out, which personally I think is a great opportunity to be patient, but active in the market. And so what I mean by that is, hey, be patient, Look for a great deal, but be ready to strike. A lot of people take real estate patience for granted and they, they just don't get ready to buy real estate. So what they'll do is they'll say, oh, I'll get pre-approved tomorrow. And they basically say that for years and then they never get pre-approved and they never get ready to start buying. And then all of a sudden you're five years down, you're like, ah, dang it, I should have bought real estate, you know, five, four, three years ago because now all of a sudden prices are jumping again. Uh, so from a near-term speculation point of view, I, I don't think we're, we're like in the greatest rush to go all in on real estate, kind of like what 2021 felt like. Uh, I do though think that buying real estate is almost always going to be a great opportunity for everyone. I don't obviously know your personal financial situation, but uh, I, I don't really care so much about near-term interest rates. I'm of the mindset that in the longer term, we're more likely to be facing deflation than we are to be facing inflation. Now, uh, yesterday, we, uh, myself and the team, we were having a little bit of a discussion about just that, where if we go back to 2010-ish, we'll see inflation was really running at about 1.7%, at least to here in the States, between 2010 and 2020, to the point where the Fed was even considering lowering their inflation target from 2% to 1.75% because they just couldn't get inflation up to 2%. And I actually think that at the same time, since we were rapidly expanding the money supply, it's likely we were actually in a deflationary environment, but the regular money printing that we were doing, a, that we were conducting, just kept us slightly above uh, a deflation at around 1.7%. Point of that is to say that we're likely to resort back to a lot of quantitative easing, QE infinity is, in my opinion, likely to return. Uh, and therefore, I think that building out assets, your control of stocks or real estate, really over the next two, three years here is, is very prudent um, because in the longer run, I expect as we're back to QE infinity, the highs that we saw in November of 2021 uh, might end up being laughable compared to uh, what actually ends up coming following, hopefully a productivity, artificial intelligence, and sort of rejiggering economic boom uh, for the global economy going forward. We'll see. We shall see. So thanks for that question, Martin. Uh, I think it's a really good question. Following up on that is actually worth noting what China's up to. Uh, China, for example, uh, just finally yesterday started talking about uh, uh, some more stimulative measures again. Now, uh, short of providing any kind of high detail of what kind of stimulus we would expect from China, uh, and people are still very skeptical that China is actually going to provide anything, uh, China has once again reiterated that they're interested in supporting the real estate market with uh, easing stimulative measures. Now, there's been sort of this duality going on with China that on one hand, if they just send helicopter money, they might actually lose power compared to the corporations in China, which has maybe put a lid on how, many, how much in stimulative efforts they'd like to conduct. 
but they are big fans of promoting the real estate market, something that has obviously been crushed uh, in part due to uh, reckless policies in China that allowed a substantial over leverage for developers uh, and the selling of properties well before they're completed, leading to almost a real estate Ponzi scheme, dare I say. But the good news is, in uh, countries uh, like uh, America or the United States, obviously, uh, or uh, England, uh, assuming you're in England, you might not uh, you might not actually have too much fear for real estate in some of the higher quality areas. Now, I want you to know this: when it comes to AI, time is what's going to make you money. And if you can prove that value to an employer, you'll always be able to be employed. So this is another way of making sure that you don't get replaced 